Hello, everybody. So let's start discussing about how to test a circuit breaker with special attention to high voltage circuit breakers. So a circuit breaker is an automatically operated electrical de uh, device designed to open and close contacts inside a breaking chamber. Uh, this is very important because in case of fault, uh, a huge current will flow into the line and then this current must be interrupted in the fastest possible time to avoid any further uh, damage, damages to the breaker and to other equipment present in the substations. So um, when there is a fault uh, in the line, there is a device called protection relays uh, that is able to understand that something is going wrong. And after that, it can uh, issue an open command to the circuit breaker. Then the circuit breaker will open their uh, main contact in, on, in order to interrupt the fault current. So the um, circuit breaker, you have to imagine uh, that is made by two pieces of metals. They touch each other, then the current can flow into uh, those two pieces of metal. But when there is a fault, these two uh, pieces of metal, uh, they have uh, to start to be separated. So while uh, the two metals are in movement, so when they start to be separated, the current is not immediately interrupted because uh, there will be an electrical arc that keep the current flowing through uh, the air uh, or the gas in the middle, in the space uh, that is present in the middle, the two uh, pieces of uh, conductor. But this uh, situation must uh, last for the minimum possible time because uh, this electrical arc is going to damage the surface of the two pieces of metal. If this happen, their conductivity is reduced, then uh, the circuit breaker is going to not working so well as it is designed. When uh, the separation between the two uh, conductors is wide enough, the current flow is interrupted. As I mentioned before, the arc must remain for um, the less possible time. Uh, that's why it's extremely important. And we can say that the most important parameter that must be uh, verified during the testing of a circuit breaker is the opening time. I put this picture just to uh, highlight the concept that the arc is going to damage the surface of the two conductors. And to give you a number, uh, this, when I say fast, I mean that everything must happen uh, in a few tenths of milliseconds. Um, the circuit breaker is designed to interrupt uh, current. Uh, so if I say that the arc is going to damage, uh, the circuit breaker uh, is not actually true because uh, uh, the circuit breaker is designed to interrupt hundreds of times the load current that is typically in the range of 100, 300 amp. So this uh, is a situation where uh, the um, circuit breaker can operate safely. But if there is a fault, the current to be interrupted can easily uh, go beyond one kilo amp. So the arc in this case is so energetic that is uh, for sure the, uh, the surface of the conductors will have some bad effect. So this means that every time the fault current is interrupted, the remaining life of the circuit breaker is reduced. So after two, three or fault um, time, the, the default current is interrupted is absolutely necessary to perform some test on the circuit breaker in order to understand if it can remain in service or must be repaired. Um, inside the breaker, you can find uh, uh, the so-called arcing contact is there to absorb as much as it can uh, the energy of the arc that is uh, created between the two metallic parts. You can see in the picture that this arcing contact is made uh, from this 
piece of metal while the main contact is made by this um, larger piece of metal. So when they when this part go inside this part, we can see uh, that the circuit breaker is closed. Another uh, way that is typically used, another method that is typically used uh, to avoid uh, that the arc is, uh, is uh, so energetic is to put gas, not uh, any gas, but SF6 gas, uh, that has uh, a, a power, the power to uh, extinguish uh, the arc better than the air. Um, the interrupting power is a, a function of the pressure. So higher is the pressure of the gas inside the chamber, higher is the interrupting power. This means that any loss of, of SF6 gas reduces the pressure. And then if it, become, if it becomes too low, the circuit breaker cannot operate. If the pressure is going uh, below a certain level, uh, a refill of the gas is necessary. The circuit breaker can be uh, made not only uh, from a single uh, breaking chamber, but can be made uh, with a series of two or even four. Um, this picture represents a single phase. Uh, the same, uh, um, you can imagine that the same picture is uh, replicated for the other two phases. Um, uh, the use of more than one breaking chamber is to uh, increase the uh, distance between uh, the main uh, contacts because higher is the voltage, higher is the distance that the two pieces of conductor must uh, uh, keep each other in order uh, to avoid that the arc remain for a long time. Typically, when uh, the nominal voltage is higher than 230 uh, kilovolt, you start to see uh, two break per phase. During the operation of the circuit breaker, typically when it's open and closed, of course, um, not only the current can uh, be dangerous for the, for the breaker itself, but also the extra voltages that can come from the line. So um, one solution is to place capacitors in parallel to the main contact, and these capacitors uh, have, the, uh, have the name of grading capacitors. And these capa capacitors are there to ensure uniform voltage across all the contents point during the normal switching operation. Another uh, uh, device that you can see in parallel to the main contact is the so-called pre-insertion resistor. It's there for, uh, more or less for the same purpose, so avoid that extra voltage uh, appears across the main contact during the switching operation. Um, this voltage transient uh, may have voltage peaks whose value can go beyond the rated voltage. So the circuit breaker is designed to withstand, let's say, 200 kilovolt. If you go, let's say, uh, at 300 kilovolt, you may damage uh, the circuit breaker. So what, but from where these extra voltages come from? It comes from the line itself, because uh, the line is not a pure, uh, resistor, it is uh, mainly an inductor. So every time you apply and you remove uh, the voltage, what you see is that the inductance uh, react, um, increasing the voltage, uh, not for a long time. You can see in this graph, um, this peak can remain for a few milliseconds, but the peak voltage can be very high. If we come to the medium voltage switch gears, uh, all the concepts that we are going to explain remain the same because basically uh, the job uh, that a medium voltage switch gear is doing is the same of the high voltage. What is different is of course the nominal voltage uh, for which uh, they are designed. So they are more small, more compact. Now we go a little bit inside on how is made a circuit breaker. So. Um, 
now we know that the circuit breaker in the end must open and close the main contact but how um, this uh, operation is possible so first of all you need commands so inside the breaker you find the so-called coil commands that once energized they trigger a spring actually not only a spring uh, you can find also pneumatic or hydraulic uh, mechanisms but uh, this will not change the concept so i preferred to discuss about springs because it's more intuitive to understand uh, that the spring uh, can store energy so uh, once the coil command is energized the springs are triggered and the springs release their energy um, transferring the uh, energy to the mechanisms and leverages and this will go uh, to move the uh, main breaker contacts uh, all the uh, equipments uh, present in the substation uh, for example uh, protection relays or uh, SCADA systems must be informed about uh, the status of the main contacts if they are open or if they are closed and the way uh, they are informed is through auxiliary contacts and they are very important because uh, if one of these uh, contacts fails uh, for example there is a fault the circuit breaker the main contact open but uh, the auxiliary contact that must inform the substation that the circuit breaker is actually open is not working uh, for the for example protection relay the main contact uh, is still closed so this means that is not working uh, if this happen a logic called uh, breaker failure can be activated and when the breaker failure is activated uh, most of the time the uh, all the breakers that are connected to the bus bar uh, are um, opened uh, so there will be a general command that open and switch off the whole substation just to give you an example so it's very important to keep under control the behavior of the auxiliary contacts. In the end, uh, we have to mention also that there is a motor that will charge the spring. Otherwise, the energy uh, will not uh, be created otherwise. This is a typical result example uh, where we can see uh, a graph like this where uh, this is the time this is a thick line that represents a closed contact then a thin line that represents an open contact these black are uh, the main contacts this red are the auxiliary contact and this is a typical uh, uh, shape of the coil currents that is flowing into the coil so we can see that this uh, line represents where the uh, coil um, is energized. So from this moment, the timer will start to count. And then when this change status, for example, in this point, uh, we can consider where the, um, the contact is uh, actually open. And from here to here, you can measure the uh, opening time. So what we uh, should keep under control when we test the circuit breaker. So if we discuss about coil commands, what we have to verify is that uh, the peak uh, of, the, of that shape, the peak current is uh, what you expect. If the total flow time, so the total time in which the coil is energized is what you expect and also the shape uh, gives you some information and from them uh, from that you can understand something then main breaker contacts uh, we have to test the opening and closing time but also we have to test what is the value of the resistance because uh, when the circuit breaker is closed um, the value of this static resistance is very important but also when it opens and closes it's uh, very uh, interesting to understand uh, what is the behavior of the uh, variation of the resistance uh, during the movement 
and this is co uh, called dynamic contact resistance. Uh, as in particular, uh, you do this test to understand the condition of the arcing contact. Then, when it comes to the auxiliary contact, the only thing we can check is the switching time. If we uh, come to the pre-insertion resistor, uh, we have to uh, measure the value, because actually it's a resistor, so we have to measure a resistance value, and also the insertion time, because this is a moving part, it moves more or less together with the main contact, and uh, there is also a time, it's called the insertion time, that must be verified. Regarding mechanisms and leverages, what we have to verify is that they move as you wish, as you would like to see, and also you have to verify uh, the speed, because if the speed is not high enough, this has a direct impact to the open and close uh, time. For the motor, what we can test is the operating current to, to verify if it is uh, properly working, uh, if it is uh, properly working, we can uh, say that it is able to uh, charge the spring uh, properly. Proper test need proper device. So we uh, can suggest the use of uh, our circuit breaker analyzer called CBA3000. Um, it is our latest uh, device that we designed years ago. It is uh, um, provided with a built-in PC, so you don't need a laptop to be operated. Um, there is a part where you can connect the main and auxiliary contacts for the timing measurement. This part is uh, where you can connect the coil commands up to six. This is uh, the section that generate the current, and here where measure the voltage for, uh, for example, micrometers test in order to measure the resistances. Okay, let's uh, have a little discussion about what information you can get from this shape. Okay, when the current is zero means that the command is not issued yet, but when the current starts to rise, this means that the coil is energized and then the plunger is actuated and then the main contact starts their movement. But after a few milliseconds, the plunger uh, strikes the latch. So uh, you can see this uh, small drop in the current. This means that uh, there is a mechanism that uh, is requiring more force. Um, so this is uh, evident from uh, this um, small reduction in the in the flowing current. But um, if the plunger is uh, stop moving, but the main, con the main contact is not to stop uh, their movement and it continue. It continue when um, we reach the maximum, you can see this uh, plateau. And in this point, the contacts uh, reach the final position can be an open or closed position. It depends on what type of operations uh, operation is doing. Then the current start to uh, be reduced because the operation is finished. Then the coil current can be uh, reduced to zero because the coil is de-energized. This plateau is, a, or uh, another way to say, is the peak of the current is depending on the voltage uh, that uh, is used to supply the coil and the resistance of the coil. If the resistance of the coil increases, then the peak is reducing. So um, if the peak is become too small, uh, maybe uh, the coil current is uh, somehow uh, defective, damaged, or old, and must be replaced because this may have an impact. So uh, if the coil, car, the coil command is not well working, when you need to operate the breaker, maybe you cannot. Um, if uh, is necessary, I uh, decided to put uh, these two pictures just to give you an image on what is a plunger, plunger and what is a latch. So uh, imagine that the plunger is 
the arm of the box when they start to move, uh, start to move in this direction. And this is the latch. So when uh, uh, the plunger strikes the latch, then you can see uh, this drop in the current. This is to, um, to try to give you a visual uh, idea on what is going on inside the circuit breaker. So the information that you are getting is this. So uh, by comparing your result with a reference shape, you can see that maybe uh, if you get a result like this, there is a defect in the plunger or the latch. So if you have a modification in this part of the, um, of the uh, coil uh, shape, coil current shape, uh, the information that you get is for uh, plunger and latch. If you have uh, a reduced peak, uh, is an information uh, regarding the coil itself. If you need to uh, measure this current, you need a device that uh, must be connected in series to the coil. So uh, we, we can see in this scheme that we connected uh, three open coils, one for phase A, one for phase B, one for phase C, and one closed coil. In, in such a situation, the, um, the closed coil means that it op is operating the three phase altogether. Okay, so um, now we are going to see actually how the measurement uh, of the main contact uh, opening and closing time is performed. So the normal way to understand if the main contact is open or closed is to measure a resistance value. So if the circuit breaker is closed, then you take one device uh, that is able to measure resistance, and then most probably you uh, find a very small value. But when the circuit breaker is open, then what you see is a very big number. We can assume that it's close to infinity because it's an open circuit. If we want to see in a graph uh, what happened actually, you see that you can issue the command. So the circuit breaker starts in a closed position. So the resistance that you can measure is very small. And when it opens, this impedance or resistance become infinity, and then you can say that the circuit breaker is open. So this is the traditional method that can be used uh, to understand when it is opening or closed. Um, since we are using uh, uh, electronic devices, we have to tell to the device uh, at least one threshold. So Let's say that we define that this threshold is 10 ohms. So every resistance measure uh, that gives you a value below 10 ohm, we can say that CB is closed. If we go beyond the 10 ohm, the circuit breaker is open. Uh, must be highlighted that uh, when the circuit breaker is closed, the uh, resistance that is uh, depending on the contact resistance uh, stay in the range of a few microns. So we can say that this is practically a short circuit. So what we need to uh, be able to discriminate is a short circuit or an open circuit. Very easy. Uh, coming to a possible uh, test connection using our device CBA3000, in case of one break per phase, you can connect one wire to this input, a second wire to this input, and the same can be done for the phase B and the phase C. For the two break per phase, uh, per each phase we need three wires, one for uh, break number one, the second for break number two, and a third wire for the common between the two breaks. Not only the timing, timing inputs, uh, we also need to uh, do not forget to connect the coil commands. Otherwise, uh, first of all, you are not operating uh, the breaker and you are not having uh, the current that is the reference from where to start to count the time. Some pictures from the field. This uh, is a 
single break per phase. The, the operator must come to the top here to place the clamps. Um, and you can see you need a ladder to reach the top. Uh, if the ladder is not enough, then you need an elevator because uh, for very big, uh, very big circuit breaker, uh, the, the height can be easily 20 meters. So you need an elevator. This is the breaker analyzer. This is a zoom of this part where you can see that the cables are connected on this part of the breaker analyzer. And with this further uh, zoom, you can see that in the panel you have LEDs that is uh, telling you if the breaker is open or closed with uh, colors. So green means that is open. In case of uh, a red color means that the uh, contact is closed. Two uh, typical uh, examples, once again, so we have uh, the uh, coil current. As we know now, the coil current is necessary to understand from where to count the time. And when the thick line become, a th uh, sorry, the thin line become a thick line, you see the transition and this represents the moment where you have to consider the uh, closing time in this case and the opening time in this case. You can see that the three phases are not perfectly synchronized and this is normal. Uh, what is important is that this uh, difference in time called pole spread uh, is not exceeding uh, uh, too much, uh, is, is not too much big. I mean, must remain in, in very, very few milliseconds, this difference, like one or two milliseconds. Okay, so uh, uh, since now we discussed about single operations, but it's possible that the circuit breaker uh, must be able to, or is required to do a sequence of operations in a very short time. Um, I give you an example. Um, everything is normal, so the circuit breaker is closed and the load current is flowing. Then uh, a thunderbolt is uh, uh, hitting uh, uh, one of the tower of the line so the um, this is actually a fault because the current in the line uh, become very high so uh, for sure a protection relay will command uh, the breaker to open but the thunderbolt will not remain forever uh, actually after very few milliseconds it disappears so uh, why not to try to close to try to close uh, the breaker after the open uh, in order to energize uh, the line, because uh, uh, if the line remains de-energized, uh, this is not uh, this is not good. But there is also the opposite situation, where uh, there is a fault, and the reason, the cause of the fault is not disappearing. The most typical example that, that I can imagine is a tree that is growing below the line, start to touch the cable here, and then. Uh, the, the circuit breaker cannot remain closed, uh, must stay open. Okay, this is uh, a standard uh, way to express uh, a, uh, the so-called reclosing cycle. So O is the open uh, command, T is a time delay, C is a close command. So <clears throat> there is a fault, then there is an open command. After let's say 300 milliseconds, there is a first tentative of reclosing. If the fault is not there anymore, then the, um, the circuit breaker can remain closed. But if the um, cause of the fault is permanent, after this close command must be issued immediately after an open command. And this take the name of switch on to fault because we are uh, energizing uh, the line when the fault is present. So the sequence of a fast recloser plus a switch on to fault is the most critical sequence because the springs must release all their energy in a very short time. So in other words, the springs must 
have inside enough energy to guarantee this operation. And this is a test that must be done in the field. So if uh, the timing of all these operations are not uh, what you expect, maybe it's because the springs are not uh, well working. This is an example of uh, a reclosing cycle. So we start from a closed position, then we issue an open command. In this case, uh, we see three uh, coil currents, one per each phase, so phase A, B, and C. After 300 milliseconds, uh, there is a close command, and after another uh, uh, short time, an open command is uh, uh, issued, and this is the behavior of the main contacts. So we start from the close position, open, then close open. Um, inside the uh, circuit breaker, there is a mechanism that uh, keep always separated the uh, the command, the, the open command, and the closed command. I mean, if you issue in the same time uh, the closed command and also the open command, I mean, in the same time together, uh, there is a mechanism that will not allow. Uh, to let's say to don't make the circuit breaker confused because if you tell in the same time open and also close the circuit breaker does not know what to do so um, there is a device that apply this separation and this must be verified that is uh, actually what is happening during your test uh, you can see that if you are switch uh, if you are switching on to fault, so you are closing the circuit breaker uh, when there is a fault present in the line, the main contact man, must remain closed uh, for a very short time. In this case, it was 22 milliseconds. And this name, the, sorry, this time have, uh, has the name of dwell time. So when you do a switch on to fault uh, operation, this time takes this dwell time. Uh, as a last comment, uh, it's nice to say that uh, uh, between the close command and the final open position, the total time is less than 100 milliseconds. Uh, since you can imagine how big is a circuit breaker, um, imagine this uh, big size of uh, pieces of metal that are inside the breaking chamber. They're big, heavy, but they move very fast. So you can imagine how much energy is necessary to move a circuit breaker. Um, so uh, if you have to test uh, a single command, maybe close, maybe open, or a more complex sequence, uh, CBA 3000 give you a straightforward uh, uh, solution. So you just press this button cell, you, if you press, you can select the operation that you want to do, the sequence that you want to do. You press start, and then you get your result. Okay, it's time now to see real testing. This is a medium voltage circuit breaker. We are going to connect the timing input of CBA3000 to the main contacts. We will connect uh, the simple uh, cable to these clamps. We will also connect the uh, coil commands to using these cables. The first operation is to enter into the instrument settings in order to define what is the hardware configuration. Uh, we have a predefined configuration where we can indicate the test mode. In this case, is a standard mode. If I want to change it, I can change it into uh, BSG, so the both size grounded mode, or the GIS testing. In this case, we select the standard mode. The number of breaks per phase can be one, two, or four. It's a medium voltage breaker, so we have only one. The number of open coils, one or three. 
close coil one or three the uh, number of micrometer in use zero one or three and if necessary we can set the number of auxiliary contact two or six but uh, a different number of auxiliary contact can be uh, selected by using the custom configuration the pre-insertion resistor if present is possible to be measured if we have travel transducer it's possible to use one analog three anal analog one digital or three digital and if we have a minimum trip coil option in the circuit breaker uh, we can test it by enable the option Okay, if we modify the settings, we can apply the new configuration. And once the predefined configuration is applied, it's possible to press the question mark button in order to see uh, the connection scheme. These are very useful because CBA3000 has a programmable hardware. And according to the uh, predefined configuration, uh, different wirings must be done. In this case, uh, the scheme is uh, represented uh, is representing uh, the um, uh, the phase A to be connected to the first contact. The phase B uh, must be connected to the second input, and phase C to the third input. These are the open and closed coil. This is the side panel of CBA3000. Uh, all these inputs are the timing inputs where we are uh, now connecting the main contacts. The LED, the color of the LED is indicating the actual status of the main contact. In this case, uh, nothing is connected, so this is uh, the same situation when the uh, main contact is open. Connecting the main contact and it is closed then the LED becomes red. This is very helpful because uh, uh, this information sometimes is not available uh, on the breaker itself. Continuing with the connection this is the phase B and this is the phase C. We can now check that the circuit breaker is closed. In this output, we are connecting the coil commands. The green LED is indicating that uh, this uh, output is programmed to control the open coil. The red LED is indicating that we are going to control the closed coil. We connect here the close, the, the open and the close uh, coil, and these two wires are the positive of the power supply battery. Now it's possible to go to the test and result section. With the quick selection button, we can select. Um, immediately what the operation that I want to do. In this moment, the circuit breaker is closed, so I can select uh, the open command. Pressing start, the test is performed immediately. This is the graphical representation. The um, The thick line represents the closed status, the thin line represents the open status, and this is the open coil current. Pressing the uh, table button, we can see the same uh, result, but in numerical format. This is the peak uh, coil current, 0.45 amp. The flow time, so this is the time uh, where the coil current is different than zero and this is the open time for the 
for the main contacts and we can see that it's about 43 milliseconds. I can now select the close command and press start. Okay, this is the graph of the close coil. Again, pressing the table button, we see that the peak current is uh, about 1 amp. The flow time is 81 milliseconds, more or less, and uh, the uh, close time is about uh, 40, uh, sorry, 53 uh, milliseconds. We can also do a open close open sequence. The results are uh, represented uh, the same way as before. Now we expect a more complex table where we can see in the same time the close and open uh, um, coil currents and we see several timings uh, correlated to the open and close operation. In this case we have two open operations, that's why we have this indication one and two uh, this is uh, the first open operation with uh, the time and this is the second open operation with the time. So the next, the next parameter we are going to discuss is the uh, static contact resistance. So first of all we need to understand why the static resist the, the contact resistance uh, need to be very small in the range of micro ohms. So let's take uh, some easy number like 100 ampere as a load current that is flowing into a resistor of 100 micro ohm. So applying the formula to calculate the uh, dissipated power, we can see that the dissipated power is just one watt. But if we change the order of magnitude, so instead of talking about micro ohms, we talk about milli ohms with the same amount of current that is flowing in, we can reach the uh, value of uh, 1000 watt as a dissipated uh, power. We all know, we all have uh, an hair dryer at home or an oven, and this is uh, a value that uh, you can see on the hair dryer. So they consume. Uh, easily 1000 watt to produce heat. Um, so it's very important that um, you never reach this uh, level of dissipated power, otherwise you can have a situation like this where the um, temperature of the metals here become too high and if this situation remains for too long can be uh, dangerous. We always have to remember that uh, the value of the power itself does not produce heat. What is producing heat is the energy. So we have to multiply uh, the value of the power for the time that is applied. So you can have also a huge uh, value in terms of power, but if it's not applied for long time, uh, the uh, heat that is produced is not high. So uh, the concept that, but that must be very clear is that higher is the resistance, smaller is the time to reach a very high temperature. Now, the measurement of a resistance value seems an easy job. So we take a multimeter, we take two wires, we connect them to the resistance that we need to measure, and then you get the value on the screen. Of the, on the display of the multimeter. Um, this method is called two-wire method because you are actually using just two wires to perform the test. If we come to this scheme, the yellow square represents the multimeter itself. So these two uh, circles represent these two plugs, and this is the wire, number one, 
and this is the wire number two that from the uh, plug go to the resistance to be measured. So the, uh, in order to measure the uh, resistance, the multimeter is applying a very small current and this very small current is flowing into the wires. Uh, but the problem here is that the voltage, because in order to measure a resistance, we have to measure the voltage and divide it by the current because of the Ohm's law. So, but if I measure the voltage from these points, what I'm going to measure is not only the resistance of the contact, I'm also measuring the resistance of the two wires. So in principle, this is not a recommended uh, method to measure very low resistances. Uh, because even if you try to do your best to compensate this value, uh, it's extremely difficult, I, I mean, to uh, understand this value and then compensate it, so uh, subtract uh, this value from the final result. Even if you put all your effort in order to evaluate this value, in the end, uh, it's very difficult to have an accurate result in the end. So, in principle, this is not what we will use. Uh, so, one possible solution is to split in two uh, what is the current generator and what is uh, the voltage uh, meter. So, the multimeter can still uh, be used, but not as a ohm meter, but as a volt meter. So, the number of wires now from two uh, become four. That's why it's called four wire method. So, you can see number one, two, three, four, and in this scheme, uh, with the same notation, you have wire number one, two, three, and four. Why this method guarantee that um, what you're going to measure is just the resistance of your contact? Because the current that flow in the wires connected to the voltage uh, uh, input is extremely small, uh, so you can neglect. Uh, we can assume that the uh, in input impedance of any voltmeter is almost infinity, so the current in uh, uh, the wires is almost zero, so there is no voltage drop in this wire, so you can safely say that if you apply a four-wire method, you are going to measure correctly even a very small resistance with any uh, compensation to be applied. Unfortunately, the four-wire method itself does not guarantee always <clears throat> to get the most correct value. Uh, when you want to measure micro-ohms, you really need to take some precautions. So the first one is find the right position to place the voltage terminals. Because if you make a mistake in the right position of this terminal, then you get the wrong value. Then you need to use a test current uh, with a very high amplitude value. Then the current must have a very stable amplitude. This means that you need a direct current source, extremely flat, so no ripple. And in the end, you need a very good noise rejection. Now we are going to explore one by one uh, these four concepts. <clears throat> so let's take a, a simple copper bar. If I want to uh, calculate what is the resistance, I can apply this easy formula. So we take the copper resist resistivity, we multiply it uh, by the length of the copper bar, and we divide by the section. So this is the length, and this is the section. If we give some numbers to be uh, used to calculate uh, a reasonable value, we can use this, that is uh, the copper resistivity, a length of 0 0.5 meter, and a section of 300 uh, millimeter squared. We plug this value into the formula, and then we get more or less 28 micro ohms. That is a reasonable value for our discussion. But the copper bar 
can be uh, considered as a sequence of uh, uh, smaller pieces of uh, copper connected in series. In my example, I decided to divide the copper bar in four pieces. So the total resistance of those four pieces is in the end uh, 28 micro ohms. So if I place the voltage terminal at the end, at the very end, at the extreme position of the copper bar, is uh, what I'm going to measure is the total of these four pieces. Then I get 28 micro ohms. But if I move the voltage terminals, for example, from, uh, to here and to, to here, what I'm, what I'm measuring is just the resistance of two out of four pieces. Then I get a value of 14 micro ohms. So just this can introduce a 50% of error if your uh, target is to measure 28 uh, micro ohm. So once again, the position of the voltage terminal is extremely important. So this is one of the typical mistakes that uh, is possible to do in the field. So this is the current clamp and this is one of the two voltage terminal. So if you place the voltage terminal here, then you get a value that is around, uh, this is a, our example, but um, don't focus on the value itself. Uh, what is necessary to understand is that we get a very high value if I place uh, the voltage terminal here, but if I move the voltage terminal to the right position that is this, then the uh, resistance value become the correct one. Why this difference? Because this junction, you can see in the picture, the, the junction between this metal plate and this metal plate itself uh, has a, a, a resistance of 30 uh, micro ohms in this example. This means that the contact resistance is not 106 but is 28. So uh, don't do mistake, this mistake, otherwise uh, uh, you get wrong value. If we discuss about uh, medium voltage breaker, the version that you can uh, remove from the cell, then you can find this, uh, this um, connection, then you have to decide where to put your voltage terminal. So if you place the terminal here, maybe it's not the same to place it here. And also uh, the way you connect maybe is not uh, good. So that's why uh, very often uh, special adapters are uh, placed into this hole in order to uh, guarantee the best repeatability of uh, uh, the measurement. Vice versa, there is uh, the, uh, the opposite version of the medium voltage switch gear. This is the uh, version that where uh, the, the switch gear cannot be removed. But again, uh, the concept is the same. Wherever you place the clamp, uh, then you get the value. In this case, must be very close, as much close as possible to the main contact here. So if I decide to take this clamp, instead of connecting here, I'm connecting here, I'm also including this, uh, the resistance of this bar. So the, vol the, the, the resistance value will not be correct. Now, why the test current must be high? Imagine to use 10 amp as a test current. With a resistance of 28 micro ohms, then you get 280 micro volt. Just to give you a rule of thumb, whenever you need to, te to, to measure less than one millivolt, uh, you need uh, a very extremely super accurate voltmeter. So uh, basically it's not recommended to go in the field and ask uh, to your device to measure less than one millivolt. That's why the recommended test current is 100 amp. If we apply 100 amp to 28 micro ohm, then you get 2.8 millivolt, that is a much more reasonable value to be measured. Um, maybe this is something new for uh, 
someone uh, of you that is listening, uh, but is an interesting concept. Whenever you uh, take your clamp uh, that you use for as a voltage terminal and you connect it to uh, the main contact uh, metal, uh, these two metals are different. They are not the same uh, material. So uh, the junction between two different uh, uh, conductive material create itself a voltage of a few micro ohms, and this is called Seebeck effect. Uh, basically, it's the same principle of the temperature sensors, thermocouples. They use exactly this principle. Two different pieces of metal that touch each other, and the voltage that come across uh, the junction uh, is in the range of uh, microvolt and also change all, uh, according to the temperature. But why is necessary to, to be aware of, about this concept uh, when we measure uh, micro ohms? Because when uh, you want to be extremely accurate, it is necessary that uh, your micrometer, before to inject the current, before to inject the current, is doing a voltage measurement itself, voltage, uh, record this uh, value in terms of volts, and in the end, subtract this value from the final result. So in this way, you are extremely sure that the, um, uh, the result is correct. So since we are talking about small voltages, it's better uh, that this um, concept is clear. So uh, you need a very stable uh, um, current uh, uh, generator because uh, if you apply a rectifier wave waveform like this, you are not interested in the peak. You are interested in the um, DC component of this um, uh, waveform. And uh, the first uh, the, fr the first cause of inaccuracy is uh, a mathematical approximation that uh, your uh, measurement device is applying because it's not a direct measure, it's a calculation. And also, if the peak voltage is uh, too high, then in order to measure the peak, because in order to calculate correctly the, uh, uh, the DC component, you cannot uh, use a, a, a range that is not able to measure correctly the peak. But if the peak is too high, then you are using a, a full-scale range that is too high to be accurate at low uh, voltages. So uh, it's absolutely better to use a very flat DC current source in order to avoid this kind of issues. OK, so pure DC signals guarantee the best accuracy. In the end, the last precaution that must be taken is uh, the application of noise rejection. So the substation is a very disturbed environment. So uh, you have a bus bar at very high voltage that uh, induces uh, electromagnetic field in the air. And then this electromagnetic field can be coupled, coupled uh, to the wires that you are using for your measurement. So Imagine to measure one millivolt in an environment like this. It's not impossible, but uh, it's absolutely necessary that the cable that you are using has some shield in order to filter out as much as possible the noise. And uh, uh, in case the noise, uh, a little bit of noise uh, remains, then you need uh, a system that is able to filter out uh, the line frequency. OK, so um, if you use CBA 3000, you don't need uh, two separated devices. Everything is integrated. So the uh, current generator, DC current generator, uh, is this. Actually, there are three, not only one. So one, two, and three. Generate 100 amp each one. And this is. Uh, these are the voltage input for uh, the uh, resistance. This is a possible uh, uh, connection for one phase. So the current is flowing here. 
and this is the voltage input that is going to uh, measure so with simply thousand we are using the four wire method because you can see the number of wires is four one two three four and this is an example for the two break per phase um, must be uh, um, uh, highlighted that uh, with a single connection you can measure up to six uh, resistances simultaneously because we have uh, uh, three generators and six input here available for this measurement. Okay, having discussed about the dynamic resistance, uh, the static resistance, now it's time to discuss about the dynamic contact resistance. So this is a picture that we saw before. Um, the inside the breaking chamber you find the arcing contact and the main contact. So it's important to also evaluate what is the voltage, sorry, the resistance trend during uh, the uh, movement. In order to perform the measurement, you first of all have to start the current generation, then issue the open command, then uh, you have to keep the current until the main contact is fully open, and this um, current profile must be recorded with a very good uh, sample frequency, let's say at least 10 kilohertz, in order to have a good time resolution of 100 microseconds. So the measurement setup in the end is the same as the static resistance, uh, st static contra resistance, because we are measuring resistance. This is a dynamic resistance, but it is a resistance. So the setup is the same. This is a real dynamic resistance. Uh, graph this has been measured in the field so when the main contact and the arcing contact are closed you see a very small value and now we know that this value is in the range of few micro ohms then the uh, the open command start the movement so the main contacts in this, uh, um, this picture is not connected anymore, but what is uh, still connected is the, um, um, the arcing contact. So you see that from few microns, you go in the range of few milliohms, and then when all, uh, also the arcing contact is open so the information that you get from uh, a graph like this is uh, an average value of the uh, arcing contact we talk about average because uh, you will never see a, fl a flat and or a unique value is always a graph so what you can take is the average of this value and also the uh, duration uh, what is interesting for us is to measure the arcing contact length. But if I, I don't have a device that is giving me an information in millimeters, I cannot talk about distances, but I can talk about time. Uh, so if the arcing contact is a little bit damaged, it means that the conductive surface is less. So it will, will be necessary less time to see an open contact. So uh, the result is that you will reach the open uh, status a little bit before. This is uh, just an example. So uh, this uh, almost 40 milliseconds, this is a little bit less. This is an indication that the arcing top contact has been affected uh, by uh, the arc. Um, this graph is uh, a quite nice graph because it uh, has been rec rec recorded during an open operation. But if you try to do it when you close, the uh, graph will not be so nice because uh, uh, the speed of the contact when you close is higher because you are recording what is happening after the whole travel. So uh, it is accelerated. In this case, it starts the movement, so it's not accelerated yet. But here, 
the speed is higher because uh, it's coming from some milliseconds of acceleration. So this graph will not be so nice. So if you want to see a good graph, do it during open uh, comments. This is another uh, field example. This has been shared with me with uh, one of uh, from one of my customers. Uh, I have been uh, uh, with him for a training, so we discussed together about uh, the dynamic resistance. Then after the training, he did uh, some tests by himself. He found uh, some bounces, so some small interruptions in one of the phases. Then he, uh, after that, just to be sure that this is not a mistake of the uh, timing input of the device, he performed a dynamic resistance, and this was the confirmation that something was wrong inside the circuit breaker. So you can see from infinity, then there is uh, the resistance that is increasing, and this corresponds to this uh, open uh, a situation for a short time then is going back and here is definitely uh, closed. This test has been uh, recorded with another test set called the uh, CDA 1000. It's uh, one of our best seller devices. It's much sim simple if you compare uh, with the uh, CDA 3000 but it does the job. When the circuit breaker is uh, out of service uh, typically, at the, two, at the two sides of the circuit breaker are connected the ground leads in order to keep under control the potential uh, at the ground uh, level. Um, so this is a picture that is showing us a typical ground lead. So we connect the the line, the cable to the ground, and all. So this is the condition where, uh, before to do the test, you find your circuit breaker. Um, in the previous discussion, we said that the traditional method is to understand if the circuit breaker is closed or open, is to find a, a device able to discriminate what is a short circuit and what is an open circuit. So this is a quite easy job, but in order to be in such a situation, you need to disconnect one of the two sides from the ground. So uh, if you do this, actually you are breaking a little bit some rules because uh, uh, the safety condition wants that you keep the two sides connected to the ground. If you keep the two sides connected to the ground, what actually happens is that you are going to connect in parallel a uh, resistor, a parallel a resistor in parallel to the contact. So when you open the circuit breaker, the equivalent resistance that you measure here is not going to infinity, but is going at uh, the value of the ground resistance. You can see in these two graphs, if you remove one side from the ground, then when the circuit breaker is open, the resistance goes to infinity, otherwise goes to the resistance of the ground grid. Now we have to understand, uh, since we are engineers, uh, we have to give uh, values to what we say. So, uh, we understood before that the contact resistance is in the range of tens of micro ohms, but and the ground resistance is in the range of hundreds of milli ohms. And when the circuit, break, circuit breaker is closed, these two resistances are connected in parallel. Uh, but since this is much higher than this, we can say that uh, the equivalent resistance when those two are in parallel actually. Uh, is the contact resistance. So we need a method able to discriminate uh, between micro ohms and milli ohms. And believe me, the traditional method is not able because it's not sensitive enough to understand, to detect this small variation in resistance. 
So what we need, and before to continue, this is the result that you may get. You always see a close status, even if the circuit breaker is open. So you need an advanced method in order to get good results. So uh, when the measured resistance is the contact resistance, uh, the device say that uh, the CB is closed. When this measure is measuring the ground resistance, the circuit breaker is open. The advanced method is, um, the, is the use of the current. So we have to inject current in the poles in the main contact. This current, when the circuit breaker is closed, is flowing into the uh, main contact, but also into the uh, ground distance. So it's uh, divided in two. But when the uh, circuit breaker opens, the current will flow only in the ground resistance. Since the, uh, the variation in resistance is uh, the one that we said before, you see that the current from, let's say, the, the maximum value drop down to a lower value. In this example, I decided to put 130 when the circuit breaker is closed and 85 amp when the circuit, circuit breaker is open. Vice versa. The, uh, the behavior of the voltage is opposite. So higher is the resistance, higher is uh, the voltage. In, if we uh, see, uh, we discuss about current, higher is the resistance, lower is uh, the current. <clears throat> so if I'm able to detect this transition, I'm able to measure the time. So I need a device able to generate current and measure this kind of transitions. Okay, this is uh, just to repeat the same concept. So when the car, when the circuit breaker is closed, you have the maximum of the current. When it opens, there is a drop in the current. When it closes, okay, the current is uh, going back to the uh, high value. But uh, that nice trends are possible only in laboratory. Um, this graph, I decided to put uh, this uh, simulation to be sure that you understand what we are looking for. But it is absolutely not what you get if you do the test in the field. What you get in the field is something quite distorted because uh, you can have noise. Uh, you, you can have a current that is induced into the leads, uh, in the wires, testing wires, uh, from the bus bar voltage. So this is something that you may expect. But uh, if you don't take precautions, since you are looking for variations, these variations cannot be so steep, so fast. So the, the variation can be slow. And if the uh, variation become slow, then you are doing a mistake in the time measurement. So uh, you need an algorithm able to eliminate all the distortions that are not wanted. This is another uh, reason why you need a generator that generates current with a very flat amplitude. Because if the generator itself introduces variations in the signal, then you can, uh, you can create uh, issues because uh, uh, the, the variations that you measure maybe is due to the generator itself and not because of the operation of the circuit breaker. The advantage uh, to keep the both sides grounded, that means that the two sides of the circuit breaker are uh, left connected to the ground, is that uh, with the same setup that you use for the resistance measurement, you are also measuring the time. So. It's a big advantage. Uh, if you have a traditional circuit breaker analyzer, you have to perform the connection first for the time measurement. Then you have to disconnect the wire, and then you have to connect a micrometer. Uh, if you have a device able to measure the time in both sides grounded mode, then you just have to perform the wiring just uh, one time, and you do all your tests. OK, it's time now to see real testing 
In case the circuit breaker is uh, both sides grounded, um, the main contact is uh, basically shunted by a very low resistance. Now we are uh, simulating this condition by applying a physical short circuit with a simple cable like this. So we can observe that the main contact is seen as a closed contact. This is the main problem. If so, CBA3000 is not able to understand the changing of the status between the open and closed status. This means that we can, we can uh, no longer use this input. We have to change the approach and use the three micrometers in order to perform the open and closed timing test. The circuit breaker is now connected in a way to be tested in both size grounded mode. All these cables come from the CBA3000. Uh, and uh, for example, this is the cable for the high current injection. And these are the cables for the voltage measurement. The same connection has been done for the three phases. Having changed the setup, we have also to change the instrument settings. The test mode now must be both sides grounded. And as the um, message is indicating, we have also to enable the three micrometers. Then we have to apply the new configuration. Okay, if I press the question mark button, now I see that the timing input are not used. Then I go to, okay, this is the scheme for the coil uh, currents, but this is a connection already done. Okay, and we see now that the micrometer is in use and this is the output current that is, will be used for the phase A and this is the voltage input used for the same phase. Pressing this button, I can see that the phase B will use this output and this input. And for the phase C, we use this output and uh, this uh, voltage input. From the side panel, we can see that the connection has been performed. These are the three micrometers and these are the three uh, voltage input used during the test and uh, as before these are the, uh, two uh, the two coil commands open and closed. The test is performed in the same way as before. What has been changed is only the uh, test configuration so the, uh, we define a new uh, predefined configuration and a new uh, wiring. Going to the test and result uh, section and using the selection button, we can decide to do a close uh, operation. Pressing start, the test is performed immediately. This is the uh, graphical result, so the um, main contact is going from the open status to the closed status and this is the closed coil current. Uh, these are the results in numerical format and the close time is about 53 milliseconds as we measured before with the standard method. The next test can be an open uh, Operation, pressing start, the test is performed. And this is the uh, graphical result of the open operation. Going to the um, table, we can see that the measurement is performed correctly. So the open time is about 43 milliseconds. The breaker is open, so I perform now a manual close command in order to prepare the breaker to perform uh, a contact resistance measurement. So, 
In order to uh, select the static uh, contact resistance measurement, it's possible to go to the test plan. Uh, in the test list, we have the close and open operation that we performed already. So we have to add a new test. Here we select the static resistance. Here we can select the test current. In this case, I can decide 200 amp and also the range can be uh, from 500 million down to 250 micro ohms. Okay, so in order to test uh, the three phases uh, for a uh, one breaker phase, we have to go into this table and set um, the breaker number one for each phase. Okay. So the test is added. So in order to perform the test, we go to the test and result section. This is the static resistance um, tab. I press start. There is a message that is uh, rem reminding us to perform the connection to the phases. And pressing OK, the test will be, will be done. Okay, in case of static resistance measurement, uh, the graphical result has, uh, is not important. What is important is to read the numbers. Okay, these are the three uh, values. In this case, uh, the value is uh, uh, very high because uh, um, according to the connection that we have performed, this is the best we can do. Because uh, with this setup, it's not possible to connect the clamps um, in the best position. So they are not uh, exactly placed on the breaker contact. That's why these values are quite high. Uh, what is in also important to remember is that we can do a uh, open and close uh, timing uh, measurement and also the uh, contact resistance with the same uh, wiring and the same setup. So it's not necessary to change any connection between the two types of tests. Okay, uh, the webinar uh, is concluded. So thanks for uh, your listening. I hope it was interesting for uh, the main part of you. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Bye bye.